All right, so uh, now we're going to move into the last phase of this project here, which is to actually submit an initial authorization to hire this candidate. Um, so obviously, this person, a they came in for the interview, we really liked them, we thought that would be a good fit for the program, and we'd like to move forward with them. So specifically because we are using a direct support professional position as an example, I'm going to show you what the next phase in the hiring process would be specifically for that position. It is our most popular position, so it's going to be relevant for a lot of hiring managers who are going to be in this system. Um, so what you would do is in the job that you created, uh, you're going to find that candidate that you are identifying as a finalist for the position. You're going to check next to their name again to bring up the reject and advance buttons and you're going to click advance and you're going to look for the status that says finalist identified direct care positions only. Uh, so once we click on that status you'll see that iSIMS is going to prompt you to complete the DSP eval form. So you're going to select OK. And then from this drop down box in the iForms, we're going to go to DSP eval form. This form is the same form that we have been using on paper, but we're just going to fill it out now on iSIMS. So you'll see candidate evaluation form, and these are the exact same questions that used to live on the paper form. They're just now in iSIMS. And the way that we're going to fill out this form is by going in the top left hand corner and clicking the edit button. Once we do that, you'll see that the form will become available to edit. And you'll go in there and give the interview name, uh, the, the time, the date, and you're going to just fill this form out the same way you would on paper. And we are asking as a courtesy to just be as detailed as possible in the comments. If you don't have much to say about a particular you know, uh, question, then you don't have to fill in the answer. It's not required. But if you do have any type of comments that would be useful to know, uh, we ask that you put them in there. Uh, now, again, you'll have to go all the way through this form down to the bottom, and you'll have to select whether or not you recommend this candidate for further consideration. Um, if you don't, then you can select that. But uh, then you'll also have to sign the interview with signature by checking this little check mark box and then you'll click save and exit. And so now your DSP eval form will be completed uh, and it'll live on the candidate's recruiting workflow profile. So now we can close this out uh, and we'll go back into the candidate's profile because now we're going to look to fill out the initial authorization form. So that form is going to exist on the second tab here and then again, like the DSP eval form, we're going to select edit. And this is where the information that lives on our paper initial auth authorization form is going to be transferred online. So the offer date, let's say we're going to make this offer today, or we'd like to. I'm going to select the date. And then the proposed start date, again, is going to be that orientation Monday. So the next one coming up is December 2nd. Uh, now, this is the part of the training where we're going to take you through how to calculate a person's salary, both on an annual basis and an hourly basis, as well as how to calculate overtime pay rates. So we'll take you through that right now. Now that you know how to calculate a pay rate, uh, we're going to take you through uh, the rest of the submission process for this candidate. Okay, so you'll see. <clears throat> okay, so uh, now that you have all the pay rates entered into the initial, we're going to indicate the scheduled shift again. Hypothetically, we're looking for this Sunday through Thursday, 7 to 3. The offer hours per week is going to be 40 again, and then the employment type will be full-time. This information is obviously going to vary on a case-to-case -case basis, 
uh, you know, we ask that you just pay as, as much attention to detail as possible because the fewer mistakes that come through on the initial, the faster the recruiting team is able to process these initials. But at the same time, we don't want you to worry that if you make a mistake that, uh, you know, this person is not going to get hired or that the hiring process is going to be held up. Uh, the recruiting team is always checking and double checking any submissions that we get for any errors and we're looking to correct them for you. Uh, but obviously the fewer errors they are agency wide, the faster we can get these people into orientation and the more efficiently we can work. So we're gonna go ahead and press the save button in the top right hand corner once all the information has been filled out. And then we're going to go back to the person, select again their name, click advance, and we're going to click this button, this status right here, launch request for offer approval. And this is basically going to tell the recruiting team, hey, I would like to hire this person officially. And if you remember, when creating a job, you had to have an approver. You'll also have to have an approver to make the hire. So the same approvers that you put on the job will apply here. You'll put your supervisor in, your direct supervisor, followed by your recruiter and then you click save and begin approval and the approval process will begin just like the signature process on the paper initials. Once you have all of the approvers uh, give the green light to this candidate, then, uh, then the recruiter will do the necessary background checks and make the offer in, uh, you know, in as, as quickly as possible. And that is how you hire on iSIMS.